The 2024 WNBA draft was absolutely star-studded from top to, to bottom in the first round. And I think one of the players who sort of slipped through the cracks and has gone a little bit unheralded is Aaliyah Edwards. And she has absolutely blossomed as the sixth overall pick in Washington in ways that I'm really impressed by that uh, I think deserve a lot of highlighting, which is why we're here to do the video today. The Mystics have been pretty decimated by injury this year with Shakira Austin and Brittany Sykes both missing the majority of the season two of their very best and most important players. Um, but I think the way that Aaliyah has been able to play with them out and find her own role within that has really impressed. So for reference, in June, she started all six games that they've played. They'll, they'll be playing their seventh game tonight. But she's averaging just under 13 points, nine rebounds, and 2.3 steals and blocks while shooting 63% from the floor. And I think she's just a great case of understanding the importance of fit and being able to go to a program or team that is going to get the most out of you or can find ways to get the most out of you. I want to start by saying that data is not infallible, but it is indicative of things. And especially when you look at Aaliyah's start to the year, um, the data has been incredibly telling and backing up of what she's been doing on film. Part of what was so interesting with me for Aaliyah as a prospect was that I loved her in, in terms of the things she could do. I loved her intangibles. I loved um, all the things that she brought to the court that just, she's just a good basketball player. There's like no other real way to quantify that in my opinion. But I did have real questions like what is going to be her primary position in the league? How are teams going to utilize her? Um, you know, where is she going to get her best opportunities to really spread her wings and grow her skill set? Because I think she has a lot of really great stuff on the baseline and foundation but I was just curious what that was going to look like to start off. What's been so interesting to me in, in seeing this is, and, and I think part of a great reminder in like, you know, you only know as much as you know. Um, I really wasn't high on Aaliyah's ability to play the five in the WNBA. And Aaliyah has spent almost half of her minutes with the Mystics playing center. And it has been a huge reason why she's been so successful as a pick and roll finisher, which is the, the large impetus for this video. When you look at her statistics and what she's doing as a pick and roll finisher, she is not just good. She has been legitimately great. One of the very best in the league. Playing as more of a small ball five has given her opportunities to use her athleticism, her quickness, and her aggression to really put opposing fives in a bind. Um, we're going to dive more into what that looks like in, in the film, but I think when you just look at the numbers... 90th percentile in the league in pick and roll finishing efficiency. So that's really good. She's shooting 68% true shooting. So true shooting takes into account free throws and your, your total field goals as well. Again, she's 15% above league average in true shooting, which is like remarkable. Like I believe John Paul Jones is leading the league in true shooting percentage right now. And she's around 67 or 68%. So again, incredibly good numbers to have. For reference, I think it's really worth noting that Aaliyah had 27 possessions at UConn as a senior in just over 30 games. So excluding the NCAA tournament, just looking at the Big East and, and regular season as a whole. So she had 27 possessions as a senior. She's had 24 possessions as a pick and roll finisher in 14 WNBA games, while also playing a, a smaller role until the past couple weeks. UConn is not a pick and roll heavy team. They never have been, and they probably never will be as long as Gino is there. And they just made the final four. Can you blame him? Things work. Um, but point being, I think I, and perhaps many others, undersold what Aaliyah could do as a pick and roll player right away in the league. Again, to, to show and highlight what she's doing, I put together this bubble plot. So the whole idea is the farther you are to the right without being super high up, like let's just say north, in other words, more points scored and less possessions, or, or you want to say medium possessions, is optimal. And Aaliyah is right up there. So again, this isn't just to point out that she has been good. She has been legitimately great playing in the two-player game to start the year. And that is incredibly important because to me, I wasn't entirely sure what her best skill was going to be on offense if she was going to primarily play the four, especially coming in and playing next to Shakira Austin. And granted, we haven't really gotten to see her and Shakira play that much together. There's a lot to be excited about, but I think in terms of what it looks like on court right now, there has been some clunkiness with them playing together. Aaliyah is you know, still working on becoming a consistent floor spacer. She has her jumper out to you know, 15, 16 feet, likewise with Shakira. 
both have a lot of upside. But again, when you talk about making that immediate transition to the league in a league where you need to be able to translate immediately, Aaliyah finding this has been crucial. Aaliyah's best attribute as an offensive player is her ability to attack the basket and put the ball on the deck. And the Mystics have really weaponized that early on in the year out of ball screens by letting her play with pace. So there has been a ton of opportunity for her to attack out of the two-player game by quick flipping and getting out of screens and, and kind of like using her ability as a screener along with the shooting gravity of her guards to get her going downhill and have some extra space to attack off the bounce. That's been absolutely huge in her getting to the line and also being able to take on larger fives who don't have feet as quick as she does. One of the best and most important aspects of her being so efficient early on. To add some context, like we're talking about with guard play, Julie Van Lue is having a really good season for the Mystics, her first season in the W after a, a pretty extensive pro career overseas. Um, she is currently one of the most prolific off-the-dribble shooters in the league. She hasn't been extremely efficient, but she's been in the 80th percentile on off-the-dribble shots in the WNBA. You add in on top of that that she's second in the entire WNBA in pick and roll possessions per game, just behind Caitlin Clark, running over 14 per game, which is obviously a lot. Um, what stands out is her connection with Aaliyah Edwards. Obviously, Aaliyah has been able to foster connection with multiple players on the team, but Julie Van Lue and Aaliyah Edwards have one of the most prolific combos in the WNBA and the top of ranked assist combo on the Washington Mystics. To add context to how well they're playing together, they're currently tied for fifth in the league in assist combo for assisted rim shots. So in other words, like how many times they have linked up to create an open shot at the rim, or I should say how many times Julie has assisted Aaliyah for open shots at the rim. That assist duo is top eight in the WNBA in rim assist linkups. And when you compare that to the rest of the duos that are up there, number one, they are by far the least played together grouping out of all of them. Like Sabrina Ionescu and Jonquil Jones have been the best pick and roll duo in the entire WNBA. Like no, no two ways about it this year. But again, like you look at this in comparison with um, how prolific they've been, how much they've been able to link up and play together and factor in like, Hey, most of that has happened over the last two weeks rather than the entire season it stands out incredibly. And then it also, again, pointing out, this is some really good names to be tied together with. Van Lu is incredibly shifty with the ball in her hands, but also has a real tendency to draw two defenders on the ball because of her shooting ability. That's opened up so much for Aaliyah to operate as that player who can slip out of ball screens when two players come to the ball. Again, another huge thing for her to do as she's so good operating in space. The next area for growth for Aaliyah to continue improving as a player out of ball screens after already having found this ability as somebody who can finish out of them is to continue developing as a playmaker and in her ability to just make decisions coming out of ball screens. Because right now, out of what we call the short roll, I think there's a tendency for her to get smothered at the rim and have some not not fully see the court um, like I think she's going to need to in a couple years. But again, this is stuff that she didn't get to do a ton at UConn that I think she's going to really develop into well. And she's already showing some really good signs of making that growth and ability. So to, to show for reference, this possession from a game in May, get the ball. This is where you want to call the short roll right here. So this is a short roll. Once you catch the ball and you have that half a second, second to make a decision, she's going right up in here. Does not see Olivia Nelson and Dota coming. Also, shout out to Husky on Husky Crime. We love seeing it. Um, I, I've, I love watching both these players play as Huskies and, and seeing them in the league is very fun. Um, but this is exactly what we're talking about. And this is also one of the things that will be important to figure out between the Aaliyah Shakira front court, because you have Shakira Austin over here. Olivia Nelson Adota is not worried about the jumper. She immediately is helping over, gets that block. I think with Aaliyah, you want her to be able to, to come into this. Maybe it's like slightly shorter path and she sees that dump off or, she's able to, to wait a beat and get into a more secure finishing position. Because going right up into this layup, that's easy for Olivia. So that's definitely going to be one of the next areas for growth in that. Again, you, you come into this one against another very good defensive team in Seattle. You have that quick flip out of the screen like we talked about, kind of almost like a push-off screen. So it gives the effect of the screen because you have the, the gap in a defense, you're exploding into it. Aaliyah catches the ball, goes right up into a layup. Again, you have Stephanie Dolson, 
is probably the read here, but also just slowing down in general because going right up into this layup, it just isn't there. And that's okay. Again, that's part of being a rookie. This is, yeah, game six here. Um, it's not an easy thing that you're going to see right away, especially, again, considering how little Aaliyah played out of pick and roll at UConn. I think this is another really great example as well from more recently where you see, okay, granted, this is a shot clock that's winding down. You know, you have five seconds right when the, the ball screen is, is happening, but you get that quick flip. And this is a great dig from Kennedy Carter off of the, the high slot. I, on one hand, I, I think especially when you're talking like this is a rookie, I, I understand like, you know, that's not going to be something that you're necessarily used to and handling all the time right away. But I think this, again, this is something where I think becoming a player who as soon as you catch that ball, you know where it needs to go. And that's something that can improve over time and, and be wrapped out. But it will be a really crucial development for her in the next couple of years, you know, particularly on a rookie contract. Like, can you get that ball to where the help just came from? Can you get the ball going somewhere? Like even like right here, like I think Angel is helping pretty far off, which granted, like Emily Angsler hasn't shot super well this year, just in general in her career. I think it's there, but um, like there, there are options here. I think it's again, making a quicker read that doesn't take three seconds. Um, and that's not slandered towards Leah. That's just in general, I do think that's going to be a really big growth area for her. But then you start looking at some things that are starting to happen. Well, in that same game, this is one that I absolutely love from her. Again, slip the screen, Get the her her and Van Lu have been so fun to watch. I love this overhead. Doesn't really have space, but like see, well she has space, but like it's a little bit high of a lofty pass. Has to go up for it. Kennedy Carter's right in her space, jumps right down. This is good stuff. She's patient. She doesn't just try and go up with it right away. Yes, it's against the guard, but finishing against Smalls is the first step towards being able to finish against big. She had some issues earlier this year if a guard rotated low where she wouldn't necessarily see them coming, I think that she's able to, like, again, you stop right here. She sees Kennedy. She's like, okay. And then pauses, hesitates for, I wouldn't even say hesitates, hesitates the wrong word, but like pauses, gives herself a beat to set and gets the ball up again. Good stuff. And then to close out another similar look, this one is probably the best short roll look that she's had all year. Gets the ball again on that kind of away pick and roll action out of an empty side. Sabrina Ionescu comes over and help. Aaliyah sees it coming after she turns her head. Quick step over. Easy finish. Good stuff. It's all stuff that I think Aaliyah is going to really be able to grow into. Again, I think, you know, kind of figuring out some stuff front court position wise is going to be important for the Mystics. But when you have Aaliyah already finding this kind of stuff, it's really exciting, man, especially considering, like, again, this is not stuff we saw very much at UConn. I'm really excited about where she's going moving forward, what she's doing already. If you like this video, let me know down below with a comment. Like it as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're very close to monetization, uh, which is something that I've been working towards. And, yeah, if you guys are enjoying this video, again, these videos, again, let me know.